Tech Hub for a smarter you. So I took a trip earlier uh, in the month to Ghana and I met with David Antriofori. I know we spoke with him the other time, um, about six months ago on the show, and went back to find out what's happening in the tech scene in Ghana. How far so far, uh, you know, since 2022, up to the year almost going to an end. Have they been able to, you know, achieve their tech dreams for the year? Well, in this conversation, you're going to find out this and more. How far so far um, 2022 is about to wrap up? I mean, let's talk a bit about how Ghana has forged ahead um, since the year began till now. What were the expectations and what has been done so far? I think... For principally, Ghana has um, moved closer uh, or stepped further uh, in terms of its digital transformation journey. Um, if you look at the efforts that Ghana has made towards its digital transformation for the economy and the citizenry at large, um, we've moved a, a, a notch higher. Uh, as currently, we can boast of having digital address system, having um, a, a single point ID card system, which is now fully in motion. When we spoke six months ago, it wasn't operationalized, but now it is. Uh, you can even actually travel from abroad to Accra with that card. Um, again, government services can be uh, um, sourced digitally. Um, all this counts towards that. So these individual digital infrastructure now comes together and um, it provides a critical platform on the back of which uh, private citizens and businesses uh, can capitalize on to be able to create other value added services. So, for instance, uh, with us having um, a digital address system and having a Ghana card system, which, which is verifiable, what you, someone should be able to do is to create a business line, for instance, in the, in the line of credit, where I could walk into any supermarket or any big shopping mall and I should be able to carry some goods away uh, on credit. Now, some of the risk barriers have, have dropped because of this singular critical digital infrastructure. So it points out to you that this is um, where we're going. Um, and I think the citizenry have um, done well to be able to embrace that. We've moved a step further um, and closer to where we want to go. We're not there yet. There's a lot more that has to happen uh, because just by having this uh, super highways in terms of digital platforms is not enough. Uh, you need to provide the other critical infrastructure in terms of connectivity, affordability uh, of, this, of this connectivity even, um, digital literacy, how many of your citizens are well caught up so that you can be able to adopt and adapt these um, th uh, digital platforms that uh, government is creating. So um, the journey is still a fair bit to go, but I think we've, we've, we've come a long way since we last spoke. It's great to hear you talk about the people embracing, you know, um, tech and all the good that comes with it. From what you've said so far um, about 2022, I think I can say for real that um, it seems the government is pretty inclined towards technology. Um, we know in so many climates, especially in Africa, the innovation runs faster than governance. And so the, the people embrace it first and the government tries to catch up with them. But it seems to be different um, for the government. Is it that you have um, a new set of government that is, you know, more forward looking, tech friendly, you know, what, what's the case here? I think what's pushing here is necessity. I mean, look, uh, government recognizes that it's the future. I mean, um, you either get along or you know you you, you perish uh, so and again critically i mean government needs to mobilize resources in terms of even taxes in terms of um, be able to uh, tax receipts revenue and all of that how are you going to get it there's a huge chunk of our population not just ghana it's not just part, part, peculiar with ghana but it's across the continent where a huge chunk of our population are not part of the tax bracket and they don't contribute anything as a government the only way to rope this people is to make sure that some of these things are digitized so that you can have the digital footprint of everybody and be able to quantify what business they've made, what revenue they've received, what gifts they've had, and be able to say, okay, this is what should go to the taxpayer's kitty. Um, uh, so that necessity means that we have to drive the economy towards a digital space because the analog doesn't help. And it's not just Ghana alone, but the content needs to wake up to that because if we're going to have 
a supposed open continent. We want to have a continent that is booming economically, thriving. Well, we should be able to quantify it. How many people are doing business on a digital platform, whether it's Instagram or... Um, in Nigeria, post-COVID-19, yeah, post-lockdown into 2022, um, ICT sector, as we call it there, did contribute immensely. I mean, it even beats what the oil and gas sector, which is the biggest contributor uh, to the nation's GDP, did um, by, by, by a huge margin. What, what, what is it for 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 Nigeria? What was it for for Ghana? I mean, how much did the ICT sector did contribute to uh, the GDP? The story is no different. I mean, if you look at it, yes, Ghana recently. I mean, our discovery of oil journey hasn't been that long as Nigeria has been. Uh, we're not an oil, a major oil block like Nigeria is, but we have made significant discoveries in our oil find. Um, however, the service sector, you know, and ICT forms part of the service sector uh, because um, the pace at which transactions occur, the pace at which people want to move goods and services, I mean, it will always tr beat that, you know, oil, oil, oil sector because uh, we've seen examples of that and even to the point that one of government's own agencies like uh, Ghana Export Promotion Authority uh, have really set eyes on that sector to see how much can we promote it. Because, again, Ghana has signed up to host the continental free trade area. What does that mean? What it means is I should be able to sit here in Ghana and be able to run a business in Zimbabwe or in Zambia or in um, Lusaka um, or, uh, or in South Africa or in Nigeria. So that critically means that um, services are going to grow. Because if it's an oil, if it's oil related, oil is just an oil find in a location in, in Ghana. But if it's to do with services, services spans across. I can reach anybody and the market is huge. Now we're talking about 1.3 billion people. Uh, clearly, we may not be able to sell oil to these 1.3 billion people, but we're able to sell, sell services to these 1.3 billion people. And critically, it's about tech. One of the other things we would see is that people would have more faith in tech companies. And how much you can, through tech, impact your community. The people who watch my videos, the people who see me and see what I represent, those are the people that I'm online. Tech Hub is your one-stop platform for all things technology in Africa. Tech Hub, for a smarter you. So this is a new segment that is featuring people who are actually using tech for good, making the world a better place to technology. Now, our focus for this particular edition is on, on Olushola Ayola. He's an AI expert. He deals with drones and you know all those high-tech things. And he said that through technology, we can fight insecurity and reduce terrorism to the barest minimum by using what he called a carbon emission tracker. Here is more on how he's about to do that. A better world with tech. Nigerian artificial intelligence and robotics expert and founder of Robotics and Artificial Intelligence Nigeria, Rain Olushola Ayola, has pointed out that drones could aid Nigeria in its fight against terrorism. Now, his aim is to develop drones not like Nigeria's military, but one to detect carbon emissions. You see, finding terrorists in thick forest canopies can make it difficult for drones to get a clear line of sight. And this causes heat and miss sometimes. We all agree that in a forest area, it is highly oxygenated. So any activities by humans, such as cooking, transportation by bikes, or the use of generators will generate a spike in the carbon emissions there. Himself and his team came up with a solution called Carbon Emission Tracker. Not to tell you where the tourists are, but it will tell you that these are people in the forest where no one has been able to penetrate because of how their activities affect the atmosphere. The carbon emission tracker works by collecting samples within the atmosphere and across that space, and it can show the trajectory of carbon emissions in the atmosphere. Kudos, Olushola Ayola. We hope you get all the support that you need. How much of technology do you understand? I took a look at my LinkedIn and they said, they didn't see, I can't forget the words. Hmm. 
evidence of your work. On Tech Hub, we help you understand how tech can impact your life. Your phone and your SIM card is going to be a bigger asset. And with the power that we have on social media, with uh, the digital space right now, you can be anything you want to be. One of the other things we would see is that people would have more faith in tech companies. And how much you can, through tech, impact your community. The people who watch my videos, the people who see me and see what I represent, those are the people that I'm online. Tech Hub is your one-stop platform for all things technology in Africa. Tech Hub, for a smarter you.